Mark, always a pleasure sitting down with you. Thank you, you are an author, a television star, a museologist, and a self-described omnivore of history. How many books do you have at home? Oh, shoot. I, I think we have about 30,000 in the house, and I've got, I hate to say this, three storage units, and they all have books in them. So I can't tell you the size of what's in, in the storage units, but about 30,000 in the house. And out here at the museum, probably the collection from probably from our darkest day is probably the largest collection of artifacts that you have, some over 20,000 from one October. What is going to happen with all those, all those artifacts, Mark? Well, that's a, actually a fairly small portion of the overall collection. We, we estimate we have about a million artifacts in the collection out here. Um, all of that will be going into the new storage building out here when that gets completed we hope around september october of this year um, that's underway right now um, we have a, a smaller storage uh, building here but what you have to understand is we have all three of the county's museums work out of this site and so all of those collections are here um, so we'll be preserving those collections basically for time, you know, for all time. And they will rotate out onto display and then rotate back into storage. The idea is that we're responsible for this, these physical memories of the community. And it is more important that we preserve them for the future. Uh, if they're on display, they're being damaged. The light, the temperature, the humidity, so they have to then be put into the climate controlled storage so they can rest for the future. Mark, what's been your proudest accomplishment or your greatest achievement out here at the, at the County Museum? As I view it, my greatest achievement has been the completion of the uh, three historic structures here the, uh, and, and the starting of the new uh, storage building. Um, Museum people are always looking towards the future. You know, it may not seem that way. It may seem that we're always looking backwards. We're not. We're, we're looking at the historic pieces that we are responsible for, and we're looking at how we are caring for them today for the future. And I am just proud that I can say that we have completed all the historic structures. They are open to the public. People can come out here and see them, and now they'll be here for people 200 years from now. Mark, a lot of people locally here know you from TV, and of course, around the world, they know you from your recurring 200 plus episodes on, yep. on, the, uh, on the, the Fantastic Pawn Stars show. What has the, your fame and your appearances on the Pawn Star, what has it meant for visitation and um, people acknowledging this place, the County Museum? It's actually had a great impact here. I mean, our, our attendance has gone up well over 50%. Um, it has brought the museum's um, recognition, um, quite literally internationally, because the show's on in 151 countries. And people do come in from all over the world in ways that they would never have known about us. You know, there's no way that we could have ever paid for that kind of advertising. Um, and, it's, and it's been wonderful for us. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, it was, it was a bully pulpit that we could not have purchased. And it's been wonderful. It's, it's been a little weird. Um, I can <laughs> say that, you know, you don't go into museum work to be recognized on the street, you know, but it's been wonderful. And I did it to advertise the museum and it worked. And speaking of television, Mark, do you watch TV? What TV shows do you learn from? I, I don't know that I do a lot of watching for learning. I enjoy some shows, um, you know, um, but, you know, I don't watch a lot of television. Uh, that's, not, that's not what I do. I do a lot more reading, um, and I don't have a lot of time to watch television. 
Um, I will watch Pawn Stars and I will watch the news shows just to see what they've used of what I said. If I'm on an episode, um, it, it, it takes about four hours out of my day to film one of those segments. It takes an hour just drive time to get there and get back and all of that. Um, so I always like to know, I may very well talk for 45 minutes and they may only use four or five minutes of what I say. It's always nice to know what they've actually used. So in case somebody asks me about it, I can, I can fill it in around the edges. Um, but otherwise, you know, I, I happen to like CSI. I like Inspector Morse on, on PBS. I, I like a lot of those procedurals. They're, they're just kind of fun to watch. Uh, but those are the kinds of things that I enjoy. Mark, you must be the only uh, museum administrator with his own trading card. Do you, how did this come about? And do you think this card's ever going to be as valuable as a Hannes Wagner or a LeBron James <laughs> uh, sports card? I, I don't think it'll be anywhere close to those. I actually base that on the um, um, canine cards. Canine officers um, often have cards like that made up uh, to give out to kids. And I'm a, a police badge collector. And so I knew a number of officers who had cards like that made up. And, and you have to understand what I collect are museum guard badges. Uh, so I, I knew a number of officers. And I thought that was a neat kind of, of card to give out to kids because a lot of kids watch the show and they would stop me and talk to me. And so I wanted something that I could give out to them. Well, adults like them as well. so. I gave them out to adults as well, and it had my museums on the back. Those were my stats, and uh, so it it just it it has worked very well for that, and it and it really sets aside. People know they've met me, and they really like getting one of those cards. And so now I'm going to take the card and put "happily retired" on the back of it, and still it'll still have the museums on the back because they can still come out here. You know, it's not my museum, it's the county's museum. So it'll still be here, it'll still be open for people, and I'll still advertise it. What's your most favorite fun fact that most people don't know about Clark County or about Nevada? Well, uh, there's, there's, there's so many. I, I, I like a lot of them. I, you know, if you want a modern one, we have the largest traffic intersection in the United States in Clark County. It's the intersection of the Strip and Tropicana. That's a 15 lane street hitting a 16 lane street. And those are streets. You know, we have 10 of the 15 largest hotels in the world in Clark County on four and a half miles of the Strip. Those kinds of facts are things that we just take for granted. But I also like the fact that people don't realize that when Nevada became a state, we weren't part of Nevada. And we didn't change the state constitution to show that we were part of the state of Nevada. You want to guess what year? 1875? No, no, no. We didn't become part of the state until 1867. We didn't change the state constitution to show that we were part of the state of Nevada until 1982. Those are the kinds of things that I like because it gives people pause and it allows me then to tell a much longer story about local history, which I do. And anybody who knows me knows that I will then launch into a story. <laughs> Mark, your, your knowledge is, is amazing. It's only Thank surpassed you. perhaps by Google. Do you use Google for, for your research? Oh, yeah. I, I, I use everything for my research. I, I use Google. I, I use every other site. I use my, my library. I use other, other experts that I know. You know, I, I never consider myself an expert. I'm still learning all the time. I still you know, meet people who know more than I know in, in areas that, that are their areas of expertise. You know, as I say, I'm an omnivore. I just, I find everything of interest, every area of history of interest. If somebody knows something, I, I was driving with my CPA one time and he's a good friend of mine. And I asked him, where does a certified public accountant come from? 
And he said, do you really want to know? Because I've taken the classes, I can tell you. And I said, yeah, tell me. And I got a two hour lecture on the history of the certified public account. And it was fascinating. It was a great story. And I, and I loved it. And I learned something I never knew anything about. And that's the sort of thing that I will always listen to. I don't care about sports. I'm not a sports guy. But you want to tell me, in fact, I've, I've done papers on the history of basketball. It was fascinating. I'm not a sports guy, but I'll learn anything. It's, it's all history. It's all interesting. Well, people sure do like to learn about you, Mark. So you're a very common uh, searched on Google. And are you uh, ready to do like a lightning round of Google questions that people come up with? Would you? Well, I'll to try that? them. I, okay. I'm, you know, I'm not going to say that I can answer them. Well, here we go. Let's let's here's a for example, is Mark Hall Patton married? Oh yes, 42 years. Same woman, wonderful woman. Is Mark Hall Patton still on Pawn Stars? Oh yes. Absolutely, we finished up the 17th season last December. Is Mark Hall Patton dead? Uh, no, uh, no, no, I'm okay. <laughs> Is Mark Hall Patton Amish? No, I am not, but my black hats are made by an Amish hat company called the Flying Cloud Hat Company in Ronks, Pennsylvania. Is Mark Hall Patton Freemason? No, I am not. I am a member of Eclampus Vitus, which is a fraternal organization, but I am not a Mason. This is my personal. What is a Freemason? As a member of, of the Masons, the, the, uh, it's, it's a fraternal organization. Okay. Is Mark Hall Patton related to General George Patton? We think so, yes. We, we think that, that he is a, a, about an eighth cousin, very distantly related, uh, but we haven't been able to actually make that exact con uh, connection yet. And the celebrity question they always ask everybody, what is Mark Hall Patton's net worth? Not nearly as much as people think. I'm a museum director. We don't get rich, you know, working for the county running museums. So I have no idea. Mark, for 23 years at the county museum, what's next for you and your family? Well, it's actually been 27 years. And, um, I'm going to, I've, I've started four books at this point. I'm going to be writing. I have, I'm going to be speaking. I have speaking engagements out into 2022. I'll continue to work with the, the Pawn Stars and any other television requests that come up. Um, you know, I'm going to be doing what I've been doing. I'm going to start trying to get through my storage units and get through that stuff. I've got a lot of work that I haven't been able to do because I've been working out here. It's just I'm going to be doing what I've been doing and doing it on my own time. Well, we've known each other for a couple decades ourselves, yes, and I just have. want to say it's been my sincere honor and pleasure interviewing you and learning so much about Clark County and learning about you. Thank you so much, Mark. Well, thank you, Randy. It's been a lot of fun for me as well. I've always enjoyed working with you.